This is the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show, episode 77 with Nathan Hirsch. Hi, I'm Patty Keating, and I believe entrepreneurs are the future of the world. Over the past two decades, I've built four businesses in alignment with my values, giving me the freedom to live where I want and do what I love. I'm here to tell you that creating your successful business does not require struggle or sacrifice. So how do you create the lifestyle business you love doing only what you love? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Unleashed podcast. Today's guest is Nathan Hirsch. He's an entrepreneur and an expert in remote hiring and e-commerce. In 2015, Nathan co-founded FreeUp.com with an initial $5,000 investment and scaled it to $12 million per year in revenue. And it was then acquired in 2019. Today, Nathan is the co-founder of Outsource School, a company working to educate entrepreneurs on how to effectively hire and scale with virtual assistance through in-depth courses. Nathan has appeared in 300 podcasts, over 300, and is a social media personality. He loves sharing advice on, on scaling remote businesses. Hi, Nathan. Hi, how are you? I'm awesome. So good to see you here. And I'm really excited to dive into this topic because this is something that so many entrepreneurs don't understand and really need. So um, what, what I'd like to do is get the backstory on you. Is there anything you'd like to share or elaborate on um, in addition to my introduction? No, a great intro. Um, I mean, I was a, a long time e-commerce seller. I, I started selling on Amazon out of my college dorm room. I, I scaled the business using VAs. I scaled my Amazon business because college kids were not reliable. And that got me into the VA space. And I didn't like the Upworks. I didn't like the Fiverr. So I decided to build my own marketplace. Uh, originally for Amazon sellers, although we branched out from there, um, we scaled that, like you said, not only um, from a $5,000 investment date figures, but we spent almost no money on ads. We used only VAs. We had no office, no US employees. And then we were acquired at the end of last year by one of our clients, which is kind of cool. And I still have a great relationship with them, a great relationship with the people at FreeUp. I still hire from FreeUp myself, which is a little bit weird. Um, and once we sold it, people started asking if we could teach them our systems, our processes. And that's when we had the idea for Outsource School. So um, yeah, that, that's really the, the short summary. That's cool. You're a true entrepreneur from right from the beginning, right? Right. I, my parents always made me get these real jobs every winter, every summer. And I learned very quickly that I didn't like having a boss. So I was very motivated <laughs> when I got to college to, to start a business. That's awesome. So once you decided that you were motivated, what kind of obstacles showed up for you? Yeah, I mean, I was in college, right? I had no place to put inventory. I had no money to buy inventory. So I started off buying people's textbooks and, and reselling them and made a little bit of money there. Tough to scale that business. Textbooks are heavy. I don't have like a warehouse or anything. And I also got a cease and desist letter from my college telling me to knock it off because I was <laughs> competing with my bookstore. <laughs> so you must have been so doing okay if you got their attention and they... Yeah. I mean, we had like lines out my door of people trying to sell me their, their books at, at one point and we had an affiliate program. People were telling oh, yes. people. <laughs> I love it. It, so it was what, cool. What did, but What did you do? How did you move through that? So the book, the book deal got shut down. Yeah. So I had sold some of these books on Amazon. This was 2008, 2009. So Amazon was just bursting onto the scenes and I thought it was so cool that I could have this 24 seven storefront. They'd automatically deposit money in my bank account. Like all this was new back then. And so I started to experiment and I thought to myself, Hey, I don't have much money to buy inventory. I don't have anywhere to store inventory. What if I built relationships with manufacturers in the U S that they don't know Amazon and I, they could keep my credit card on file. I just tell them where to ship it. They make it, they ship it, they charge my card and I can mark it up and make whatever I want. And Years later, I found out that it was called drop shipping, but at the time I had no idea. So I, w I started to list different products on Amazon and list other people's products, not my own. And I tried sporting equipment and video games and computers and outdoor supply, like typical college guy stuff. Yep. And I just failed over and over and over. I couldn't get any of this stuff to sell. 
So it wasn't until I branched out of my comfort zone and found the baby product industry that my business really took off. So if you can imagine me as a 20 year old single college guy with more hair selling baby products on Amazon, that was my, my first business. And we had to scale fast. I, I learned a lot about what not to do when hiring. I mean, college kids, they were smoking on the job, drinking on the job. I remember training someone for six months and then having him quit on me when I went on vacation. Like it was a total disaster until I found the VA space. And then I spent the next few years learning how to hire VAs, which is totally different than hiring people in the U S as I know that, you know, um, before finally coming up with a good hiring system that allowed me to scale. And then we applied that hiring system to, to free up going forward. That's so cool. What would you say your biggest lessons as a kid in college being an entrepreneur, like if you had to name one of your biggest lessons, what would it be? So outside of having the, the person quit on me and, and learning a lot about diversification and not teaching someone to run your entire business, but departmentalizing, um, I mean, time management was huge. I was, I was balancing like my, my school because I want to get good grades and have a backup plan. I didn't know that my business would be successful. Um, I was balancing, I was in a fraternity, I was balancing a business, I was balancing a social life and, and all of that. So I think I, I learned how to get up early before other people. I learned how to like break stuff down into smaller chunks where, Hey, I couldn't wait till the last minute to study for the test because I'd have to study and, and not work on my business. So I had to start studying earlier and, and do an hour a day or 30 minutes a day. And same thing with business, trying to break it down more and more. Um, I, I learned a lot of just, just about being a leader. I mean, I had no idea to manage people or lead people or motivate people. So a lot of disasters there that I slowly turned around over time. So you gave us a little glimpse, but tell us what you're passionate about right now. Yeah. So outsource school has kind of evolved and it's kind of funny. We started at the beginning of the year and just because we sold the business doesn't mean every idea that we come up with is going to be a good one. But outsource school is really three parts. It's what we call cracking the VA code, where we give you our exact interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing process that you can apply into your business. Then we have our process shop, which is all these formulas and playbooks on operations and marketing. So for operations, stuff like how to have a VA run your inbox, how to have a VA do customer service, bookkeeping, stuff that applies to all businesses. And then for marketing, how to hire a VA to get on podcasts, new partnerships, new backlinks. So this is all the things that we did to grow free up that we're using to grow outsource school that our members are using to, to, to grow their business. And then we have this software called Simply SOP because we will teach you how to make really good SOPs. We'll give you our SOPs, but we can't teach you how to do every SOP for your business. So we give you a tool that you can easily create SOPs, store them all in one place, video, text, very dynamic, and share them with other people, easy to update. So on Outsource School, you can get all three of these things separate, or if you become an Outsource School Insider, which is our membership, you get access to all three of those things, plus our community, plus our support, and there's some other perks as well. So that's what we're passionate about. We have hundreds of members right now, and we're looking forward to just keep adding the value because once someone becomes a member, we keep coming out with new formulas, new playbooks every single month that people get access to. That's really cool and so timely. So what's your vision for the next five years? Yeah, my goal is, is to grow Outsource School to be the size of FreeUp, right? Like I didn't sell FreeUp to, to grow a smaller company. We want to <laughs> get it that big. So hopefully, I, I feel like that you, you kind of take the lessons you learn and, and apply them to your next business. So yeah. my, my Amazon business, I had no idea how, how to hire. I spent years doing trial and error. I finally figured out a good process. When I started FreeUp, I was able to implement that process and hire rock stars right away. Yeah. But I had no idea how to market because I came from the Amazon space. You pay Amazon, they're 15%. They do all the marketing for you. And so we had to learn how to go on podcasts and improve our <laughs> SEO and, and all of that. But we never really ran paid ads. We had this very great organic marketing blueprint. So now that we start Outsource School, we know how to hire. We have a really good organic marketing blueprint. Now, how do we add paid ads on top of that and complement everything that we're doing? How do we build a membership and a community, which we never have done before? So it, we, we're kind of taking what we already know and, and kind of trying to advance to the next level. Yeah, cool. So let's talk about your own growth. What's the best advice you ever received? <laughs> um, so my mom always tells me work hard, play hard. And, and I, if you can't tell, I'm very like high energy. I kind of go all out um, in whatever I'm doing. But for, for me, I, I think my life started to change, at least from a business and personal side, when I started to map out what my ideal day looks like. And this is what I encourage everyone to do. So 
I wake up, I know my most productive hours of the day are the first two hours of the day, seven to 9 a.m. So whatever my most important thing is that day, I'm doing right when I wake up. Mm -hmm. By 9 a.m., I'm pretty mentally exhausted. I get away from the computer. I work out, do an intense workout for an hour. Then I come back and I do one podcast every single day. You're my podcast today. And I, um, I do my one podcast in the middle of the afternoon because I've learned over time that I don't like waking up and talking right away. I don't like doing it late on in the day. I want it right in the middle. And yeah. then I do my phone calls, my meetings right after that. And then I read a book and then I get away from work and hang out with my fiance and stuff like that. So I, there's obviously some tweaks, some exceptions that happen, but for the most part, I try to I figure out my ideal day and have a VA help keep me accountable to what my idea, ideal yeah. day is. Yeah, very cool. And you know your, product, your productivity and when to do what. And I don't think most people know that. Right. I mean, I have a friend who's most productive from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., which yeah, is exactly. totally fine, but he better be maximizing that every single day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say... Uh, personally, like your personal growth, what have you experienced as a result of all of this? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of reading. I'm a big fan of going on podcasts. I'm always trying to learn new things. Like right now, I'm trying to learn webinars and master classes. So I like to pick up something that hopefully I can apply to my business in real time and learn it and apply it. And I, I'm, I'm also just a big component of, I, I never just like study something for eight hours a day or work on a project for eight hours a day. I like to break it down into much smaller bits where I'm doing 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day, but very, very consistent, six, seven days a week until I master it. Um, and, and for me, I, I found that to be most effective. And even I use it in my personal life too. Like I'm learning, uh, my, my fiance is Vietnamese. I'm learning Vietnamese on the side and I'm not oh, spending cool. eight hours a day like studying <laughs> Vietnamese. I'm doing it little by little. Yeah. Nice. So what kind of gadgets and tools do you use to make your life easier? One of my favorite apps on my phone is called WordBoard because if you're like me, you probably get asked the same questions over and over and over um, from your customers, from your team, whatever it is. Um, so WordBoard, I, I preload the common responses to everything. And it might not even be responses. It could be my, my website link, my social media link. It could be a coupon, whatever it is. Um, and, and so when someone asks something and it's already there, I can just click a button and it throws into the chat without me having to type it out. So yeah. I always thought that was cool. That saves so much time. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. What about resources like books? You said you're a big podcast fan. You read every day, um, blogs. What do you recommend? So for Facebook ads, I recommend Phil Graham's, uh, I forget the name of his podcast, but it's all about Facebook ads. I've been re uh, listening to that a lot because we're getting yeah. into running ads. Um, books, uh, I'm reading uh, Shoe Dog, which is uh, Phil Knight's book about Nike. Fantastic. I mean, if you think that Anyone listening that thinks they've taken risks in their business or had bad things happen to you, he takes that to a whole nother level. So it makes you really uh, appreciate that. Um, anything from uh, Russell Brunson is obviously great. I, I just picked up Jim Edwards' book uh, on copywriting, Dan Henry's book on uh, Millionaire Secrets. So I try to just learn from the best, the other people in the space that are crushing it. Lots of business and personal development, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we'll put those links in for you guys. <laughs> all right. Looking back, if you were to do this all over again, what would you tell your younger self? Network. Network early. I mean, I spent the my Amazon business, which I did for six years. Amazon back then was super secretive, right? You didn't want to share your secrets with any Amazon seller. They're still your products. They're still your business. There were no Facebook groups. There were no Amazon conferences. So for years, I was like trapped in this bubble. And then when I started free up, I realized, man, I don't know any other entrepreneurs. Like this is not good. So I started networking and now I network with new people every single day, every single week. And yeah. over week by week, it doesn't make a difference, but you look back at the end of the year and you're like, man, I met a lot of awesome people, partners, contacts, whatever. So start networking early and, and adding value to other people and it'll pay off in the long run. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. We'll put links in for... Uh, free up and for us our school and all the all the other things that were mentioned here guys they'll be on the show notes page you can go to pattykeating.com and search for this episode and you'll find everything there that you need thanks again nathan thanks for having me hello and welcome i'm recording this episode from my home office during self-quarantine as we were all asked to stay home due to the coronavirus if you like what you hear and you'd like to hear more, please join me in my Facebook group. It's called The Unleashed Entrepreneurs. You can search that on Facebook. Come on over. It's a community of thriving entrepreneurs making a difference in the world, doing what they love, and changing lives. Hope to see you there. Enjoy the show. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have you ever wondered what you could do to make your own business and grow it online? Head on over to pattykeating.com and take the entrepreneur code. You'll discover your unique value, your personality style, and how you can combine those two into a thriving business that helps people and lets you make money doing what you love. I'll see you there. Bye for now.